Hey everyone. So it's been a while. Uh, I actually meant to make this about a month ago, <laughs> before the UK lines came out into Cold War, and some things came up in life right after other stuff came up in life that delayed this. Probably a month previous, but you know things happen. But anyway, trying to get back into it now. So um, really, you know, the Object 165. It's one of the original Cold War tanks. I you know three marked it. Really enjoyed it. Um, I kind of wanted to use it as an example to point out how much stuff has changed and evolved uh, within Cold War as they add more tanks, more classes of tanks, um, just what, what it kind of means overall. What I found is that um, there's a lot of confusion out there about, you know, uh, and I know this because I think at the current point, I'm at like 97%, uh, you know, kind of casually trying to floor market and way less average damage and the reason is because you have the light tanks that didn't exist when this launch you have the nm116 which was given out for free which is just brokenly overpowered you know um and these these additional tanks they they changed the dynamic a lot um they made it so that matches are over faster that's the biggest thing i've noticed so you have less time to harvest and just farm you still have those amazing rounds where you put out you know, six plus thousand, but it's just it's just not as common. Uh, and, you know, you can see from this uh, image, <laughs> I'm at a higher MOE, and you'll have to take my word for it because they don't track uh, Cold War MOE numbers. So a higher MOE percentage, but significantly less damage than I average when I three mark. It's um, you know, and that's just that just shows you that a lot of things people feel about game as these new tanks are delivered into our hands that they're right you know so it doesn't mean the stuff we love that was original isn't strong but it does you know you need to change how you play a little bit you're not going to be able to compete um maybe as strongly as you were there's a lot more threats out there um i have another video that's going to come up that kind of showcases some of this in era two although the point I'll make there is that the AV, you know, the 72 line is just so overpowered that it kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and then Air 3, it, again, it, it's unbalanced, mostly in the favor of the Russians, but we're seeing the new Challenger, UK line are very strong too. They're kind of what the M1 Abrams should have been. But anyway, back to this. So, the object, you know, like I said, it used to be something that really excelled in DPM excelled in mobility, that was kind of this thing, it had higher DPM and higher mobility than the M48 that was its you know, balance in the US line. Um, it doesn't really do that as much anymore, a couple of reasons. So first off, people are getting better at equipment selection, people have better crews. If you pop a crew with uh, off-road driving and the traction equipment and um, even the engine upgrade, the M48 is way faster than you expect it to be, almost negating any benefit you have. Um, the, since it's not really a DPM tank anyway, you know, the the 10% reload buff is great, but, you know, you're still doing so much more alpha with an M48. You really want mobility. The, the meta went from, I don't want to say stagnant, but the games weren't quite as fast. Now the games are very fast. Cold War is all about a meta mobility, um, so anything you could put on your tank that's going to make it faster. I found that when I was trying to mark stuff, sort of after the first couple months, more than getting your DPM higher, getting your mobility uh, higher was actually adding more damage, especially late game when you had to hunt down tanks uh, and you know harvest damage from them. So, you know, game has changed. Um, we see that previously top of the era tanks generally are still pretty strong. But there's a lot of new stuff out there that can absolutely contend. In some cases, blows it away. Again, that you know, MM and M116 is just I can't believe they gave that out for free. It's just so so overpowered. <laughs> um, but it is fun to play, and it can also make a ton of silver. So you know, if you earned it in that op and you don't like Cold War, put some silver boosts on it and you can make 500,000 um, and just fund your uh, World War II addiction. That's another option for you. 
Um, you know, this match went pretty well. And what's funny is that the amount of damage I did would have been decent for when I was remarking this. Um, it wouldn't actually have been an amazing match. It would have been just around where I needed to be. Um, but this was this was a great match. This was a lot of damage, and, and it's over so quick compared to where we used to be. That uh, you know, if you are going to try and three mark this, I think you probably only need about I don't know, maybe 4,500 damage, which is a lot less. And um, I don't know, maybe 45 more though. But it's definitely not the 51 or 5300 that we used to need. Now, four marking, that's, that's a different story. I haven't I haven't managed to do that yet because uh, I keep getting into new lines or I get up to like 99.8 and go all the way back down to 96, but I should just get good. Um, still, you know, you can see here, still a lot of strengths with this tank that can make you uh, still do very well. Um, the E3, uh, during the current season, we're giving that out. That is just a wonderful tank. If you put the traction stuff on it, it's not even slow. It's got some of the best armor in Aero 1, so I highly recommend that. It can make a lot of money, too. It's very forgiving. I'd say it's one of the more forgiving tanks in Aero 1, um, along with the M48. I, I do love the object, but it likes to catch on fire. It doesn't have quite the armor profile. Um, even the new Centurions, as garbage as I think they are, and I'll get into that into a different video. Um, they do have good whole armor, uh, although they do like to get ammo racked a lot. So anyway, it's kind of like a devil you know in the object. It's very typical Russian. Um, and as we see the new nations introduced, much like over time they were in World War II, the Russian strengths still hold true. And I guess you could say war games always had a little bit of Russian bias, but. Um, yeah, so um, this is another tank that certainly wasn't around back when this was launched, and that's the Russian TD line. Now the object, it's, uh, it's got a lot of alpha. It's entirely possible that it could high roll and kill me, which would have been funny. Uh, certainly would have ended things poorly. <laughs> and it does have good armor too, so even with heat, you can't assume that you're going to get... Uh, that damage. So you can see that was a bit of a chance for me, but I'm just kind of just trying to get the last of damage. I figured everybody else would shoot and kill him. I was wrong. Um, he does reload slow. He doesn't turn particularly fast, so he almost kills me there too, but alas, the DPM um, works out for me. So yeah, it was a good match. I don't, you know, I have actually haven't played this in a couple weeks. It, this was, I recorded this when I was going for the four mark, and you can see I was pretty close to it. I think I was like 98. We'll see in the metal thing. Yeah, 98.3. I think I'm down to like 96. I had to run the bad games, but anyway. So yeah, you know, Cold War has changed. Uh, I'll take a look at Era 2 in the next video and kind of go over some of what's changed there. Uh, eventually, hopefully I'll get around to some of the uh, British line, although I'm, I'm late. I know everybody else kind of already produced content about that, but you know, if you're here, I guess you want to hear my take on it. So, um, yeah. So, in any event, uh, enjoy the new lines. Don't forget about the old stuff, but don't expect it to necessarily perform the way that it did when uh, these were the only two lines in the game. Bye.